Since the early 80s, the Japanese company Capcom had been releasing a line of various arcade games. In 1984, Capcom hired a young video game designer named Yoshiki Okamoto to their research and development department alongside Noritaka Funamizu. Okamoto would go on to oversee the development of Capcom games as a producer and recruit a character designer named Akira Yasuda. One of the games he oversaw was Street Fighter, which was created by Takashi Nishiyama and Hiroshi Matsumoto. It was released in 1987 and would become the first competitive fighting game produced by the company. A port of the game was soon released for the TurboGrafx CD console under the title Fighting Street in 1988. In the game, the player would compete in one-on-one -on -one matches against a computer-controlled opponent or another player. The objective of the match was for the player to defeat the opponent within a given time before the opponent could do the same. While Street Fighter wasn't the first game of its kind, it introduced many aspects that would become standards in the genre. Players could block attacks, compete with other players at any given time, and perform special moves. This was the introduction of the famous fireball attack, hurricane kick, and dragon punch. Originally, the arcade machines offered the player no kind of instruction pertaining to how they could execute these special moves. Not only was this because the designers want this knowledge to be passed down through word of mouth, but these moves also proved to be incredibly devastating when used in matches. The original arcade cabinets came with a joystick and two pressure-sensitive buttons. The amount of force the player would use to push the button would determine the level of strength in the attacks. While this was supposed to be the designer's way of immersing the player into the game, it just led to damaged arcade machines. So, Capcom got rid of this problem by introducing a six-button configuration for the light, medium, and heavy attacks, another standard that would continue in future fighting games. The game had the player control a Japanese martial artist named Ryu who competes in an international martial arts tournament. The second player would control Ken, who played the same as Ryu except with a different look and aesthetics. In single player mode, the player would fight against 10 opponents from 5 different nations. From Japan, there was Retsu, a former Kenpo instructor, and Geki, a claw-wielding ninja. From the United States, there was Joe, an underground martial arts champion, and Mike, a former heavyweight boxer. From China, there was Lee, a Chinese martial arts expert, and Gen, an elderly professional killer. From England, there was Birdie, a tall heavyweight bouncer, and Eagle, a club-wielding bodyguard. In between these matches, players would enter short bonus stages that would test the player's strength and timing. After defeating the initial 8 fighters, the player would travel to Thailand and fight against Adon, a disciple of the Emperor of Muay Thai, and Sagat, the eyepatch-wearing Emperor of Muay Thai. When the game was released on the TurboGrafx CD, it didn't turn out to be a massive success for Capcom. The port of the arcade game suffered from long load times and poor controls. Due to the controller's inability to have the 6-button control scheme, the strength of the attack was determined by how long the button was held down. The game was ported to many other game systems at the time such as the Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, DOS, and Amiga. The original arcade version was eventually emulated and featured in a Capcom game compilation for the PC, PSP, PS2, and Xbox. In 1988, Yoshiki was asked by Capcom to make a sequel for Street Fighter as it had generated much success and fans. For his inspiration, Yoshiki looked at the current arcade hit Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. His goal was to make a game that looked and played much better. With Capcom wanting a Street Fighter sequel, his game was shown at trade shows under the title Street Fighter 89. Once the press saw the game and complained that it was nothing like Street Fighter, the title of the game was changed to Final Fight. While there's never a direct connection to the Street Fighter universe, there are many subtle references to the series throughout the game, such as one of the main characters is mentioned to being a former Street Fighter. The characters were designed by recently hired Akira Yasuda, who was credited under the name Akiman. The world of Final Fight is set in the fictional town of Metro City sometime during the 1990s. Players had the option to choose from three different characters and play cooperatively with someone else. The roster consisted of the newly elected mayor and former wrestler Mike Hager, and two martial artists named Cody and Guy. They face off against the Mad Gear Street Gang who have kidnapped the mayor's daughter, Jessica, and are threatening to take over the city. Even without the Street Fighter name, Final Fight was a successful game for Capcom and is heralded as one of the best beat-em-ups of all time. Many of the game's characters would continue to exist outside of Metro City and appear in future Street Fighter games. The game's success on the Super Nintendo led to Capcom producing two more games exclusively for the system. The franchise kept a low profile until Capcom attempted resurrecting the series in 2005 with Final Fight Streetwise. 
The game was a massive flop, and the studio behind the game soon shut down after its release. In 1990, Capcom tried making another offshoot of the original Street Fighter with the NES game Street Fighter 2010 The Final Fight. Instead of a competitive fighting game, the game was more of an action platform game that focused on boss battles. The game was marketed as a futuristic version of the original arcade game with a sci-fi theme. However, the story in the Japanese version had very little related to Street Fighter, though the English localization changed the main character's name from Kevin to Ken and explained how he became a cyborg who fights aliens after becoming the Street Fighter champion. When it came to America, the game suffered from a terrible localization and unforgiving difficulty. Fans of Street Fighter saw the game as just an embarrassment and don't consider it part of the franchise. While it never reached the popularity of its future installments, the original Street Fighter was the game that introduced many of the now common fighting game conventions and laid down the foundation for the franchise that would continue to evolve in later games. Many of the characters featured in the game would continue to appear in future games in the franchise. Unfortunately, the two men who created Street Fighter left Capcom after the game's production and were hired by SNK where they would go on to develop many of its fighting game franchises. The rivalry between SNK and Capcom would begin with the release of Street Fighter's now legendary sequel. Next time in part 2 of the Street Fighter retrospective, the series returns with the most important chapter in its history. It will become one of the most popular games of its time and result in a number of imitators and rivalries, but eventually come out as the most timeless of all.